Hey, it's Tony at ISTE. Uh, I'm actually not on Periscope right now because the all the networks, the cell networks, Wi-Fi, uh, they're not working. I can barely even send out one tweet or text message. So we're recording and then hopefully somehow, some way I'll be able to get this posted like on YouTube. Uh, we're at the digital citizenship and collaboration poster sessions and there's a lot of good stuff here so uh, let's go. I, I also want to introduce you to my camera holder. <laughs> Hi, Crawford, nice Katie. to meet you. I'm Sarah Crawford, work for Digital Promise. I'm Tony's friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right. we, we've done this a few times as uh, <laughs> this is like our ninth time starting this trying to get Periscope to work. So. Old, old, old school. school, yeah, old, old video, but I really miss hearts and comments right now. Yeah, I'll just, you know, tell you, I heart you. Uh, <laughs> thanks, They're right, right back at you. <laughs> so, well, should we look at this 20, 21 things project uh, for teachers, students, administrators, and iPads? It's free technology curriculum. Free resources. Yeah. 21 things for students.net. Oh, hi. Yeah, you? <laughs> you know Tina? No, I just met Tina. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sarah. Nice to meet you, yeah. Tina. Uh, yeah, so we're featuring the 21 things for students today. And basically, it's a full blown online curriculum that's free, so it's an open educational resource. And so we have teachers really all over the world that are using this. Uh, we're out of Michigan, and we were able to get a grant. And so we came together to write um, all the essential Web 2.0 tools that are out there that students should be using in the classroom but they were struggling with, the teachers were struggling with how to get the students really comfortable with using those tools in the classroom. So in our 21 things, uh, you can see some of the topics here. We have visual learning, digital footprint, dig the data, which you know students always love to analyze data. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Digital storytelling, um, some screencasting. But once you get into the thing, they're all set up basically in the same format, where the home screen will give you an introduction video. And actually, we're kind of proud that we had a group of students in Michigan um, come together and be the voices of our videos for us. So that was kind of fun. A learning objectives, and then it talks about the different quests that are in here. And then once they complete the quests, they are able to get a badge at the end. We have a lot of teachers that are linking this with their own learning management system in their district. So once they show that they've gotten their badge or their evidence of learning here, then they upload it into their learning management system for their formative or summative assessment grades. Well, and then you're just offering this to anybody who has a web connection. You got it. Exactly. Yep. Awesome. And the, the 21 things for teachers.net is the best way to get there? Well, so 21 things for students. Uh, actually, sorry, I'm out of it. Let me go to the home site. The 21 things for students is the curriculum that teachers would use in the classroom. The 21 things for teachers is basically the learning platform where the teachers would get professional development on the things that are out there that they should be associating in the classroom. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, thank you for asking. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. We're going to give her a, a ribbon. There you go. Uh, sure. Our, our plan was to, well, our plan <laughs> just, just for other teachers, we were going to put it on Periscope, but the internet is not working. Oh. So are you, you got internet on there, or there was that, yeah. hmm, they give you a special internet? No, are you just on ISTE? Oh, well, I guess maybe for broadcasting video, maybe it would be yeah. rougher. But. A little different. Yeah, you need a little different. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> Hi, Kim. <laughs> oh, yes, hello. Yes, I am so excited. We were so excited. I saw you standing there, and I thought, go ahead and introduce Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I've got so many tweets from excited teachers. It was really neat to see. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so that, that's half the poster session is just running into people and saying hi besides the, besides the posters, right? <laughs> what, did, what did you think of the 21 things? It was, it was good to have everything in one spot. I'd like to look into it. Yeah, we wait. and see it looks like there's a lot of resources there and then the the next thing would be how do you take that and add something creative to it take it to the next level so that students have a little bit of power in their learning as well oh digital brainium and they have explain everything going so we'll have to we'll have to see what this is what this is about all right <laughs> hey do you mind being on video all right uh Jeanne, Jeanne, <laughs> and you are from Curry Ingram Academy. 
Oh, yes. awesome. People can follow you on Twitter. Yes. All right. Tell, can you tell us about Digital Cranium? Yes, it is a takeoff from, obviously, Cranium. And we uh, created this game to teach digital citizenship. And we wanted to do it in a way to show uh, teachers that you don't have to have all the bells and whistles to be teaching this. And it's a, a game with four categories. You roll the dice, and you can play in teams. And you, when, whatever color you land on, you have to answer the question. Uh, in order to continue your turn. And we also created one that is specific to your school information. And if you take one of our cards, you get all the files for free and can use them for your own game. Uh, and you can customize it any way you want. So I see the rules are here. You roll a dice and you get a piece of paper as a glare there. Uh, when your team takes a challenge, you take another one. So what kind of things are on the cards? Oh, I'll be glad to let you try <laughs> something. Uh, digital data, we'll do one of these. Let me see here. This is a lie detector. To win this lie detector test, your team must decide whether the statement is true or false. So the statement is password and one, two, three, four were the most used passwords for online accounts in 2014. True or false? True. That's correct. So you get to keep moving on. And then we can move around on the on the game board. Yes. Oh, were these 3D printed? Yes, they were. <laughs> All right. So we have technology and the old school yeah. doing the board game. That's right. Yeah. And it's fun, right? It's all about learning. Yeah. This should be fun. Digital citizenship doesn't seem like the most exciting topic sometimes. It's so important, so turning to a game is a good way to get kids on board. Yes, it is. And we did it first with our faculty, and we let them experience it. We're also trying to model that in professional development of making it a fun uh, activity for people to learn. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing, and I just have to tell you, live long and prosper. Well, thank you. You too. <laughs> We, and we have a little ribbon for you since you'll be you're on our uh, video here. Yeah, this is our LibTech shirt. We created our own shirts. We combined our technology and library teams, and we are now the LibTech department. Yes, yes, yes. I have other people here. They've all disappeared. They're hiding. You know, they don't want to be on TV uh, here. Like <laughs> uh, thank, uh, thank you. I've heard a lot of names for like library and tech combined, but I uh -huh. haven't heard it called LibTech. Kind of makes sense. <laughs> so that. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> that is so. Uh, those of you watching, that what he's asking about is well, we are supposed to be live, but we can't get internet connection, so we're doing this for YouTube now, I guess, right now. Um, but anyway, this is Apple's USB 3 adapter, okay. and it has a spot for USB and a spot for power. Right. And usually, like, if this, peris if this was Periscope right now, my battery would be, like, so drained. So okay. I'm charging, but I also have my microphone going, right. because in this little, really loud room, without a microphone, we wouldn't be able to hear people. I got you. I got you. Well, thank you so very much. It's sure. been... It's been, a, it's been a great conference for me from Atlanta. I'm a middle school principal, and I'm just seeing so many creative ideas that I can take back and share with my... Put you on the spot. What's at the top of your list right now? Actually, the, 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 one, the thing that's on top of my list is I saw a, a, a poster session on interactive conferencing. That's, yeah, that's what kind of... Okay. Yeah, that, that kind of drew me to this right here because... Yeah. I want to add a, a little, a, a different element to my student news produced uh, television show. And so we could use this like a, this setup as a man on the street type of situation. So that's, that's, that's what I am. Yeah, so that's, that's what <laughs> caught my attention. So this is a Apple 3D. Uh, three, USB 3, I forget what it's called. But anyway, we have a ribbon for you because people who appear on here get to be, I just have this domain, TonyScope.com. Okay. It takes you to my blog post okay. that has a link to like the microphone, the cube, uh, what I'm holding here, and that's all right on TonyScope.com. Okay, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so very nice much. Nice to meet you. I'm Tony, by the way. My name is Donald. Nice, nice to meet you. you. <laughs> nice to meet you, Sarah. Y'all take care. Enjoy. You too. All right, take care. <laughs> that's, that's part of the fun of ISTE, too. Like I said, you stop and meet people and see what they're excited about. Awesome. Collaborative conferencing is what he was excited about. Oh, look, we can go in this area that usually would cause us problems with Periscope. Oh, okay. I, oh, look, there's a Wi-Fi router. <laughs> hmm. 
Hmm. It's probably not working right. Using social constructivism. Oh, I kind of wonder what that is. Let's see. Hi, Lynn. Do you mind being on video? Oh, okay. Well, then. <laughs> Donna, do you mind being on video? <laughs> Uh, I think, can you tell us about uh, social constructivism? I don't think I've heard that phrase before. Okay. Constructivist education is a theory that students construct their own knowledge from where they are and they gather information and they put it together for themselves. Now what this is taking it to the next level for the social aspect of it is that the you have a collaborative group doing a project together and they're collaborating, but then they're sharing that information out so that everybody understands the same concepts. And everybody learns a little bit differently. It's a personalized kind of way. I, I make the analogy to the study groups in college. You had some kids who were getting it really quickly and other ones who had to struggle a little bit more. And, but they approached it maybe from a little different angle and everybody put it together and then kind of consolidated that and made sense of the information for the whole group. So that is, a, is basically what it is. They might learn a little piece of this, a little piece of this, put it together to make the concept understandable for everybody. So in one aspect, we do something, um, as the Olympics is coming up, but Michael Phelps' body and the students would take on an identity of a body part of Michael Phelps. For instance, his heart or his brain or his muscles. And then the teacher would give a prompt that would say, Michael Phelps has just practiced for two hours in the pool. What is happening in his body? What's the glucose level? What is happening? How do you feel as the body part? And then they would answer and respond as the brain or the heart or whatever is is happening and what they need in you know to continue. So it's a very oh, oh, it's a very interesting way of kind of a personification to get the idea across. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. So then I'm actually fascinated with your graphic too, with all those people standing on there. Is that like uh, stock photography you had, or is that specially made for you? No, that's stock photography, but we did we did buy it. <laughs> so yeah, it's from Shutterstock. It's from Shutterstock. Cool. Well, it doesn't have the, the watermark across it, so you must have bought it. <laughs> I did. Yeah. <laughs> that would not be good. No. Not, not at when it's uh, digital citizenship as the as the theme here. That's right. Yeah. And, and then, so where can people find more about this online? Well, we have our QR code. I don't know if you can get that. That takes us to our wiki page that we have more examples and more information about social connectivism or social constructivism. So can you get the QR code? There you go. Awesome. What is this for? Um, well, it was supposed to be live on Periscope, but we can't get an internet connection. <laughs> so I'm going to put it on... Ri uh, actually, uh, Sarah here has a little ribbon for you if you want to look at it later. Let me talk about my son. Oh, okay, yeah. We have a free co a company, the Source for Learning, that uh, supports us. It's a nonprofit company and supports teachers. It's called Teachers First. And Teachers First has developed this My Sci Life, which is a middle school science social media platform for students to learn science. And it's a really new thing. I'm looking for a lot of middle school teachers who teach science to join us. It's free. The professional development is free. And we would love to have more people go to mysylife.org okay. and sign up. All right, awesome. Let's, see. Let's get a picture of this here. Uh, <laughs> of your uh, handout. Oh, uh, my my Sci Life. Let's zoom in. There we go. People always like to see the web addresses. Well, thanks for spending time with us. And then there's a, a little ribbon. That's where the, the videos and stuff will be. So. Okay, great. <laughs> great thank you. All right. I sh actually, I'm really interested in this one, Sarah. Reality, yeah. it, reality uh, applications of it in a one-to-one -one classroom. Yes. Okay, um, <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I'm using the camera app to record right now because Periscope is not working with the network situation. That's a nice microphone. Yeah, um, well, yeah, <laughs> give them a ribbon. This is, uh, I, I, that leads to a blog post that I wrote about uh, all these broadcasts and uh, the microphone is all there. It's, it goes to my, it just goes to my website. Oh. <laughs> you look taller on your pictures. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How I are you? Something that you said, somebody quoted you in a uh -huh. blog. Oh, is the, oh. the random roll, the QR code? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. So I'm nice. definitely going to be uh, sharing that with everybody back home. So, so that just takes you to, to a blog post on my site that tells you about all this equipment I'm using. Because cool. people ask about it all the time. So this, <laughs> all right. So that's great. It's a one-stop shop to go find what you need. Yeah. Excellent. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Tony said, and I've I've never been uh, no no one's said I thought you'd be taller, but I guess in my picture, <laughs> my cartoon picture. Okay, so back to augmented reality. Um, oh, another one with explain everything here. Okay, good job. Sarah, do you want do you want to do the talking in this one? I'll do the. You can do the microphone, I'll do the, the camera. I'll do the microphone? Okay. Hi, Amber. Do you mind being on camera? I don't. You don't mind. Okay, so we are, we were planning on doing Periscope, so we are having trouble connecting. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, so we are going to record and then post this later, but can you tell us, we're, we're really interested in the applications of augmented realities. Tell, me, tell us a little bit about what, what you're speaking about here. If you want to hold the microphone, then then yes. Uh, ooh, all right. <laughs> Fancy. Yeah. Nice and close. Um, I first started using augmented reality in my classroom by taking an assignment that I'd already done, and just stepping it up a notch. So the scavenger hunt was the very first thing I did. I um, took the scientists and I made them trigger images, and what popped up was different celebrities like Katy Perry, giving them a clue about a state of matter, describing it in detail, and the kids had to decide which state of matter it was. This was sixth grade. And then they had to go figure out where, what state of matter it was, where it was in the building, take a picture of it, make a keynote. So it was like an assessment. Um, the next year, I thought, I'm going to do this even bigger. And so my word wall in my classroom became totally interactive. Um, I started the year by putting up all, creating all of the videos and all of the trigger images, put them up on the wall. The kids could go back at any time with their earbuds and their iPad, because we are a one-to-one -one school, um, and, and get the information. And then the kids were excited about it. They loved it, and they were like, I want to do that. And I was like, excellent. You take it over. Please do it. So they used Chatterpix. They used Telegami. Or sometimes they just videoed themselves. Some kids made elaborate skits. It was crazy to see how engaged they were in making a 30 second video for a word wall. Um, we've also taken that to the very simple a worksheet. If you do a worksheet, which we don't use paper in our classroom anymore, so they would have to have another device. Um, but we just take a picture of the worksheet and link that to a video explaining it. So if the kid's at home, they have access to an explanatory video. Or if they're in the classroom and you're just busy with someone else, um, it makes a really good way to differentiate, to reinforce. The kids can always go back. They're always going to have that worksheet. And it frees up time for the teacher. Um, my husband does a lot of chemistry. So he uses Elements 4D by Daiquiri in the classroom. Um, a different app. Daiquiri did a great job creating it. Um, the little cubes get put together in cubes. And then you can take a look at the elements. You can see their molecular structure. If they will react, you can put them to two together and have them touch, and you can watch them bond on the screen. Uh, and it's, it's really, really awesome. The kids love it. It's just another way to make things more exciting in the classroom. So one question I have. So I love your, your word wall samples here. What do you use to design those words? Because I love how they each have different fonts and backgrounds. Yeah, it looks cool. I actually used PicMonkey which is an online, um, it has a free version, 
or you can pay. I, of course, once I started using the free version, decided I needed all of the really cool things and had to pay for it. Um, it's not horrible. It's like four ninety nine a month. And it's cheaper if you buy it for the whole year, which I never did because I didn't plan on using it. Um, but now I have. So it's really cool because the thing with augmented reality is your trigger images need to be really unique. They need to have a lot of de detail and depth. So that's what your word wall has right there. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So what's your, your tip? Someone's getting started. They, they're just beginning to explore the concept of augmented reality. Where would you point them? I would have them take something that they already do. Anything where they could do a video to explain it better, maybe, and start there with just a really simple, this is what we're doing, and a video to explain it so the kids have access to it later. Um, the word while is a little bit time consuming just because you have to make all the images so unique. Um, but that would also be a really easy way to start in the classroom. Your favorite augmented um, your reality app, what is it? I use Erasma, that's my favorite. I've tried a couple different ones. I like Erasma because I can. it's free, first of all. I can use it on my iPad at school. I can use it on my Android phone. And they have Erasma Studio, which is all the same password, which is web-based. Awesome, thank you. We're gonna just get a shot of your contact information over here. <laughs> All right, there you go, guys. <laughs> you were famous before this. <laughs> All right, well, Sarah, let's see what's on the other side here. Another Indiana school, right on the other side. Uh, Indiana Area School District, student mentorship, no bullying. I thought that said Indiana again, but it's uh, independence. <laughs> awesome. Oh, Instagram, let's go to this one. <laughs> it's funny what catches your eye in the poster sessions, right? Uh, meet students where they are. 65% of teens use Instagram. Oh, you are? Do you mind being on video? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's okay if you don't want to be. It's <laughs> You're fine with being on video or? No. no okay. No problem. No problem. But yeah. Do, yeah. Do you want to, if you want to talk over it? So we have um, one of the students presenting here. Uh, tell us what's going on with your poster. Well, it's uh, using Instagram in classrooms, so what my teacher will do is she'll put, post reminders, uh, she'll post uh, work from other students on there, so we can kind of get an idea of what class is going to be like. So it's a preview of what's going to happen in class? Sometimes. Uh -huh. uh, other times she posts work from up the previous day, so. Uh, and so the Instagram account is earthsci.edu? Yeah. And how many times does your teacher post? Uh, quite frequently. A lot of times a day? Yeah. Yeah. So, did you, you probably know this, Instagram recently changed where instead of showing you the most recent posts, it kind of mixes things up. Have you ever missed a post from your teacher because of the way Instagram works now? Uh, well, it changed at the end of the school year, so no, not really. Still got those important teacher posts. Yeah. And do other students also then post back, or is there interaction uh, with the Instagram? Uh, in the comment section, we discuss like a post she will post it and mm -hmm. uh, s stuff from the classroom or stuff like that. Cool. Do, do uh, you use many emojis in those comments, or uh, uh, no. no, no emojis? No, no. Connect with someone outside of your own classroom, or is it just your classroom? Uh, like outside of district, or yes. no, no. So you stay within your district. Yeah, yeah. And you can, you do connect with other classrooms within your school district. Uh, well, with other periods of the same okay. class. So. Okay. All right. So, it's probably a lot of extra work for your teacher to do this, right? Uh, well, she finds a way around it. She found a, a programming. Thing where uh, she can tell it, she can program it so it'll post for her at a certain time. So, okay, so scheduled posts, yeah. Kind of. Like that. Yeah, that, that helps too if she, if you can 
get those uh, scheduled out. Though I've tried to use an Instagram post scheduler and they're always like, you still have to, it, it would give you a reminder and you still have to go in the app. So it's not like Twitter where it's really easy to, to schedule posts through, uh, through like TweetDeck. But cool. Um, anything else you want to tell us? Oh, go ahead, Sarah. How has this changed your learning? How has this impacted you? Well, it took a lot of stress off because I did not have to exactly remember stuff. Because in the mornings, I could just go on Instagram and it would just be there. So it kind of relaxed me a little bit. And yeah. Awesome. And so this is a high school class? Yes. Uh, ninth grade earth science. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing. There's a, there's a little ribbon for you to tell you where you can hear yourself. <laughs> okay, let's look at some samples of this work here. Yeah, I don't hear. I, I know some teachers are using Instagram, but I don't hear a lot of a lot about it. I don't either, unless I was interested to see what they were doing with it. So I guess we can follow them. Yeah, EarthSci Edu. Them. Yeah. Yeah, it would be if it is a private group or if it's open. I'm guessing if they're having it at ISTE, we can probably see it. Yeah, you know, I'm getting more and more into Instagram, but the thing that that's hard for me to to deal with is the lack of being able to link. Like you get one link in your profile and that's it. And the kinds of things I'm used to sharing on Twitter are usually links out to stuff. And you can do that on Instagram, but then you have like see the link in my profile. But then if you have multiple links, that that just kind of falls apart. I did see one there's there's one teacher that um, she has her link goes to like a Google site and she just adds the links as we go as she goes. So the newest ones are on top. This so there's a this is there. It, but yet their their rationale here, you know, utilize where students are. Yep. You know, if they're if they're on Instagram, that's a great great place to find them. And so. it's it's visually appealing. That's what I like about it. And it's simple. So maybe this could be this is it depends on what your purpose is, but definitely think it's a good concept to explore. So I, I'm really interested in following their class. There yeah, me too. And seeing what it what it's about. Cool. All right. All right. Well, I think this this video might take a really long time to upload on YouTube. So I think we're going <laughs> to call it a day here. But uh, Sarah here, hold